And even though we are in hard times, especially in other countries, you know, other countries like, like North Korea. I don't know if you know anything about North Korea, right? But North Korea is a communist country. And in communist countries, the government controls everything. So much so that in North Korea, there are 28 government approved haircuts. That's right, 28 government approved haircuts. It means that the government of North Korea has a vested interest in people's hairstyles, you know. How do they enforce such a law, you know? How do they pick the 28 is what I want to know. Is somebody walking around, they have a, a task force looking out for haircuts, you know, walking around in Pyongyang with the list and the pictures. They say, hey, you, go! Which hair that one? Oh, no, my sister. Oh, okay, good now. And you, you look like a poor cobra. Which hair that? We don't have go to jail. Imagine going to jail for an unlawful haircut, right? You go to jail, criminals will be there. Everybody will be saying they are great stuff. So, oh, I killed my wife. Oh, shit. I robbed the bank. They say, yeah, respect. And then you come. What are you getting for? <laughs> unlawful haircut. I think, yeah. Um, I think, I think we should not, you know, succumb to all the all the comforts that technology affords us, right? And then sometimes you have to be a bit primitive uh, because we have become so used to technology, so that we are losing our brain function, right? Because the problem with technology is that it, you know, gives you a lot of information, but it's slowly degrades your brain's ability to retain it, right? Because these days, simple things, like remembering phone numbers. Nobody remembers phone numbers anymore. But then, 0242 and your phone be like, do you mean now? Nah? Get it for you. Now nobody remembers anybody's phone number. The only thing people remember is mobile being code, you know. And that one is just one, two, three, four. Strange times you are living in. So much technology so that now they come up with this thing called Smart condoms. Now, if you don't know what smart condoms are, smart condoms are condoms that when you wear and you have sex with a person and the person has an STD or something, it changes color, right? Yeah, new one they develop, and uh, it changes color according to the, the color code. So, like red will be syphilis, you know, green will be herpes. Hey, what I want to know is what color code is Babasu, you know? Should be like a rainbow, I don't know. <laughs> So they've come up with smart condoms and I don't think they thought about it deep enough because that is too much logistics for sex, you know. So now we have to put on the condom, go in, come out, take a sample, check to see if you can continue. Imagine being a girl in this situation, like lying there confused. Is, is everything okay? Say so, yeah, I'm just checking your true colors. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing they will bring is condoms which tell you whether your partner cheated or not. And that is going to change the game. All the girls in Ghana will start asking for wrong. <laughs> the rabbit will be wrong. <laughs> Because Ghanaian women will not give up easily. Even when the condom catches them, they know the condom was hacked. <laughs> By who? Hash puppy? <laughs> any, any Christians here? Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but in the Bible, you guys remember that time in the Bible, Jesus? This has to the donkey. You remember? Okay. In the Bible, you remember that Hosanna time? I don't remember. But during the Hosanna time, there was a donkey which was strapped to a, a, a tree, right? And Jesus needed a donkey for the procession, right? And he went to tell the guy that if the owner asked, 
tell him the master is in need, right? And then he took the donkey. I've read the Bible. Nowhere else did they say that and Jesus returned to the donkey. <laughs> so Jesus stole the donkey. You can do with it what you like. Uh, but Jesus, Jesus is a good I'm not a Christian, but I know Jesus is a good dude. Because you watch Jesus when you see the guy, right? Blue eyes, sex packs, have those white chapel cross on, you know. Who is that? I, I don't even know why I'm going to read the Bible. There's no account of women crashing on Jesus, you know. I want to read that and now women crash it on the Messiah, you know. Because if we are today, you know that there women will be crashing on Jesus in the house. Then the woman, Jesus puts a picture of faith with them. And you know, yeah, ooh, love eyes, eyes, eyes. Swoo! And some fat girl will come, my ovaries. And another girl will come, who they eat. For him, who they eat the Messiah. <laughs> I don't go to church, I, I don't go to church. Anybody believe in judgment day? I don't, because according to Ghanaian pastors, I don't know much, but according to Ghanaian pastors, on judgment day, we will all be in one queue, right? And there will be a big pastor to be there. And they will show you a light, you know. But they don't say whether the TV is Samsung or Toshiba, I don't know. And they will be showing your life, even the sexual stuff, right? So basically, they'll be showing porn in heaven, right? <laughs> I'll be in the queue with my Vaseline, you know. I said, this is a shit ball, let me see some stuff. Should I go more on the Jesus tangent or this is it? around these days, you know, funeral posters. What happened to funeral posters? Because like these days, one picture is not enough, you know. We have two pictures of the dead person. One of them was very young, and one of them was very old. Very young and very old. What is the purpose of the second picture, right? Because the man just go and look at it, oh, it's not a movie. That's it. Some of you probably know this, most of you don't know, but um, I, I lived in Malaysia for five years, right? I lived in Malaysia for five years. Malaysia was actually the original plan because I got a chance to study abroad, right? And uh, they gave me a choice between Malta, Cyprus, and then uh, Malaysia, right? So I got a chance to study law in Cyprus, but they brought the school fees and it was 7,000 euros, right? So I told the agent, I said, listen, if I had 7,000 euros, I'll get a plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so he came back and told me that uh, he has another offer It's Malaysia, and it's like $3,000 for a year, right? So I took my things and I went to Malaysia, and then I went and I found out that it was actually $3,000 a year. It was actually $3,000 a semester, and now there are three semesters. So now I'm fat. And I'm in Malaysia, a country I don't know, their language, I don't know anything. But when you go to Malaysia, you get a culture shock, right? Because in Malaysia, um, first thing you notice in Malaysia is that you cannot put the, take your slippers or your shoes to anybody's house, right? You have to leave it outside. Everybody that's in every house you cannot take your slippers. Uh, even in the mosque, right? Imagine going to the mosque and leaving your slippers. And you'll come and say, hey, where's my slippers? Say, yeah, Mohammed took it. Which Mohammed? <laughs> there are like 700 Mohammed in this mosque. You know anything about the name Mohammed? Mohammed is actually the most popular name in the world, right? So popular, they named it twice, you know. You see somebody called Mohammed Ibn Mohammed. <laughs> so, I'm in Malaysia and I'm seeing the cultures. Malaysia, another thing about Malaysia is that you cannot show somebody something. You know we do this in Ghana, right? Well, you know, this is the girl, this is the house. You can't do that in Malaysia. Because if you point something with the index finger, it's considered good, right? They actually don't know why it's rude. They just think it's rude. I asked the guy, why is it rude? I don't know. Just rude laugh. He said, okay. 
So instead of doing this, when I show you somebody something, you actually curl your index finger and put this on top. <laughs> so one guy was showing me a bed saying, go there. I almost killed that guy. He's still recovering the hospital today. 